Hi, welcome back. So before we get into the updates, I'd like to highlight some of our students' output. And here are um, assignments that was done by my team. So December was a slow month for us in terms of the number of lessons we were able to produce. So um, in December, we were only able to produce um, two lessons. So the first one was um, the animation for physics and the second one is um, the bouncing ball in place the animation for physics or um, physics for animation was a fun one it was fun uh, to make i also took the time to review uh, physics lessons and so it was like going back in school but we didn't make it 100 percent accurate so what i'm trying to say is you can't watch that lesson and use the information that was in there to pass your physics ex exam in school. Um, but what we favored was simplicity and also um, we were focused more on explanations that were easier to visualize because that's what's more important to us animators, right? Uh, we want to be able to visualize physics um, concepts. And the bouncing ball um, in place was animating a bouncing ball in place. And we repeated that drill three times. Um, first was via straight ahead, and then um, using halves method, and then lastly using um, favoring. So why is learning physics for animation important? It's important because um, you need to know the why in all of this. You need to understand why things move uh, the way they are. Um, so that when you are going to um, analyze um, a movement or a reference video, you are now able to think critically. You can use these concepts to determine which areas to slow down, which areas to speed up, or um, where in the animation should you ease in or ease out, right? So that's why um, learning physics is important. Another update is we have created a web page for the lesson library. So now we have a lot of lessons and if you are a new member, um, this could be intimidating or confusing. It's okay for those members who already like started like way, way back when the playlist was still like a few lessons. And as we add in new lessons, um, they're able to watch it as we add them, right? So um, they're not like overwhelmed. But for those people, like for example, there's like a new person right now is gonna join the membership. And when they look at the playlist and there's like a lot of lessons, that could be intimidating. So we have created a web page um, for the lesson library. So the playlist or collection that contains all of the lessons are still there, but we have added a new option to view the library the lesson library so if you look at uh, the description or in the caption um, then you'll see a link if you click that link that will lead you to uh, the web page for the lesson library so if you click the link it will lead you to this um, web page so this is plainly simple that studio slash lesson dash library right so the lessons are now grouped into chapters so chapter one chapter two three and four and you could also see the number of lessons in those chapters so for example in chapter one this is the animation basics there are three lessons if you click this one it's going to expand and this text would appear meaning you are viewing chapter one lessons and you could also see the total number of lessons so you can scroll down right this is like the basics right and now let's click this chapter two. This, um, the main theme of these lessons are understanding spacing. So there are a total of nine lessons, right? So 
Um, this is the first lesson in chapter 2, second lesson in chapter 2. And if you want to watch the video, um, just click this one. So if you're a YouTube member, you click the YouTube members. If you're from Patreon, you click the Patreon. So um, let's click this one. So uh, you're from YouTube, so let's click this. So that will um, open the uh, the lesson, the, the one on, on YouTube. And here on the right, you still have the playlist, right? Um, but if you like scroll down, I usually put the link on the top of like the lesson. Uh, if not, you just click more and you could try and find that link. Um, but here it's this one, view all of the lessons here. If you click that one, that's going to open up the lesson library. And also since the link came from here, so when you click that one, you have this new graphics here or um, like element that you previously watched uh, this lesson, right? So so that you would know where you are in like in the curriculum, right? So um, so that you could see that, okay, this is what you previously watched and you could scroll down and you could like see um, the coming lessons. And also like if you like wandered off too far and you want to get back to where you previously watched, you could just click this one and that's gonna lead you back here and maybe you want to watch the next lesson which is this one so you just click the link again this one so let me click this so you might ask um what's really the difference why does this exist when we already have the playlist and you could already see what's up next um the thing is with the playlist we have all of the lessons all in one place right it's not divided into chapters and if you are new and you start from here all the way to the end, that could be overwhelming. It's also hard to grasp, right? Unlike if you view this in the like the web page, if I'm gonna click this again, this is now categorized into chapters. So the way that you could use this, for example, like this week, you might have like a goal that I'm just gonna do chapter one, right? So you can do just chapter one and you know like how many lessons so it's not that overwhelming anymore because in chapter one there are just three lessons and on chapter two nine lessons right so you're currently for example this is what you have finished watching so i'm just going to click this one and okay i'm here like how many lessons left on this chapter so one two three and four more right before we proceed to the next chapter so it's it's like it's much easier to grasp but basically this one and this uh, the playlist they are the same it's just presented in a different way right so if you prefer it this way then you don't have to use this link but if you want a more organized link that is divided into chapters then you can click this one it's gonna like open a new tab and then since the link came from here in this video we have this previously watched uh, lesson right so if you're gonna go to a different lesson for example in this fl6 uh, in between for example this one see uh, this one because we have all of the lessons in one place i don't know which chapter is this right but if we click this one because this is from fl06 if i'm gonna click this the new link is going to say that this is the previously watched lesson and it's the first lesson in chapter three, right? So um, I don't know. For me, I think it's much easier to grasp. So if you prefer it this way, then you could use this link. But if not, you could always use the, the playlist, right? Also, this one, the previously watched lesson only works if you click the link from the video on YouTube. So if you're going to like go to our website, so I'm just gonna, so if you're gonna go to the website and click the uh, lessons here, uh, if you're gonna go to this link, plainysimple.studio slash lesson dash library, you're not going to have the previously watched lesson, right? So you still need to, you know, try to recall um, your last lesson. What was your previously watched uh, lesson? Because this one only works if it's clicked 
inside of YouTube on that specific like video. But if you're going to access the library from the website, it's going to reset. Right? It's going to reset. Since I'm the one who like coded the website, I'm still trying to figure out a way so that um, your browser would remember even though if you have like closed your browser. But as of the moment, it's like this. So this is a work in progress. So we're working really hard to make the learning experience for the students um, great, right? So we're adding like features. So we don't have control over YouTube, but we have like some sort of control of how we organize the lessons. And that's what we are working hard on. So yeah, so if you're going to directly go to this link, there's no previously watched lesson. So it's like reset, right? So you can try and remember where you left off. So maybe you left off on chapter three and just try to locate that lesson. Um, so for example, this one. So this is what you need to watch next. So let's click this. And then for example, you finish watching this one and you want to go back to the lesson library via the web page, via our website, not on the playlist. So you scroll down and locate the link. So for this one, um, the link isn't like on top. So it's, you need to click more. So here it's at the bottom. So I, I will have to edit like all of the lessons and I'm gonna bring this on top. But if it's not on top, try to click more and maybe it's at the bottom. So for this lesson, I'm still gonna edit this later, um, but currently it's here on the bottom. So I'm going to click this one next. And then we have this previously watched lesson right here. And then, okay, we, let's watch the next lesson. So just scroll down a bit and then click the link. So that's it for the lesson library. And you might ask, what's the difference between a YouTube member and a Patreon member? They're basically the same, just a different platform. There are some people who prefer YouTube because um, they're more active there. And there are some people who prefer Patreon because it's less distracting. So we have like created these different platforms that would um, that would serve these uh, people. Uh, so if you're still like wanting to join our membership, so just choose the platform um, that you prefer. But basically, they are the same. The lessons that are in YouTube is also the same lesson that you can find uh, that you can find in in Patreon. So they're basically the same. They have the same lesson content. So what's next for the lesson? So we're really bad at following our own schedule. So I'm not anymore gonna make any promises for January. And um, what I'm about to say right now is just what you could expect in the future. No specific month anymore. So next up is timing and spacing. So we have discussed spacing a lot in the past lessons, but not um, in relation to the timing. So now we are really going to like um, break down or really explain timing and spacing. And as we go deeper into the physics topic, then understanding timing and spacing um, is important. And then we're going to have a drill to apply the concepts taught in the timing and spacing lesson. So you would try a different timing and you're gonna try different spacing. Um, so that's next. And then we're gonna have a lecture on squash and stretch and a drill applying squash and stretch. And then we're going to have a lesson on potential energy and kinetic energy. And then we're going to have a drill to animate a bouncing ball, but this time moving forward. So I have bought um, these balls because uh, I'm going to um, study them and use them as reference um, for this lesson. And also so that I would be able to um, explain or create a framework um, that's uh, easier for you to follow when you're going to animate a bouncing ball. So that's it for this update. If you are a member already, then I look forward to seeing more of your output. If you're not a member yet and want to learn frame by frame animation, then I encourage you to join our membership. Thanks and I hope to see you soon.